All right, Bex Nation. Hey, we are getting ready to get started this morning to roast some farmhouse blend. You know what that is. We cannot keep it in stock. So right now I have to do it because some of you are waiting on it as we speak. But before that, I don't have any coffee in my hand and we need to go get some coffee. Let's go. I don't know if you know this or not, but this is the same barn and shed that we've been roasting in for the last 23, 24 years. Brought it from Nashville all the way out to Jolton, put it on a truck, put it down, and we've been roasting on it ever since. Let's go get some coffee. Someone painted a painting for us, it's really neat. <laughs> Anyways, that just happened. Hey, what do we have on tap today? We have the Colombian. The Colombian? Yeah. Perla de la Enza. Could I get a medium of that, please? Awesome, you want any sandwich? Yeah, let me have um, like four grams of sugar okay. and a little bit of cream. You got it. All right, thank you. All right. All right. 328. She's messing with us. She's messing with me. Put it on my tab. I need coffee. There's my daughter. We just roasted this two days ago. It takes about three days for it to get really, really good. You know, if you get really, like, really, really fresh coffee, it doesn't taste as good as three-day-old coffee. But we want to roast it and get it to you, so in three days, you can enjoy it, right? Coffee, by the way, it gasses off when you roast it. Gasses off CO2, carbon dioxide. So your coffee has to bloom. And what that means is when you hit with hot water, it gets big and it just starts exploding. That's what you want. That's fresh coffee. Just a little bit of cream, sometimes black, sometimes with cream, just a little bit of sugar. That's because I want it today. All right, guys, I'm gonna turn on this roaster. This is our, our original roaster. It's 12 kilo, we can do 25 pounds. And we're talking about hand roasting, craft roasting. We don't have a big machine. We have a small machine. I'm gonna get it started, okay? Get it warmed up. What are you doing first? Uh, I am going to turn on the drum first. Get the drum going. It's about 300 pounds, and I gotta get a, bit, a little bit of help because, you know, it's old. All right, I just started the drum. I'm gonna start the fan. I'm gonna start the gas. Okay, now the gas. Listen to that. The pilot light is trying to get lit. So we gotta get, get it started. It's clicking, clicking, clicking. It's primed. So now let's wait for it to heat up. What we're roasting on today is a Dietrich, an IR12, uh, 12 kilos, 26 pounds. I would call it vintage. Dietrich makes some in Sandpoint, Idaho. There are awesome people out there. Beautiful machine, it's classic, and it's a drum roaster. So your beans go in the top, we open up the chute, we drop the beans into the roasting drum. The roasting drum's about 300 pounds, and it's like a big, I would, I would call it like a big cast iron skillet that's rotating. So it's, it's heating the beans, but then there's also air that's infused in it, the hot air. And so it's got both convection and also conduction. It's very traditional and it gives us a, a well-rounded flavor in the cup instead of it being really like airy or flat or thin. It's like syrupy, rich. It probably is a little bit more messy process, but we like it, that's what we do. So this is my son, Gillum. Uh, Clayton, my other son, is behind the camera. We're gonna get ready to get started with this. Just by the way, some people are like, oh, why are you using Lowe's? But you know what? Oh, it's food grade. Gillum's gonna help me here. Say hi, Gillum. What's up, guys? <laughs> hey, don't mess this up. We're on camera. <laughs> Wait. Okay, we gotta, get, we gotta get this dropped, man. Let's go. Let's heat it up and we gotta get this going. Look, if we don't, the roaster goes nuts. It start doing bad stuff if we don't get it going. Hey, Gillum, so you just started roasting, eh? Uh, about five months ago. We just started doing it more just because I've been pressuring him. Go. What are you doing? We are dropping the coffee from the hopper into the actual drum. Oh. It's really raw right now. I call this jasmine or jade. One of those colors. The color? Yeah. Let's just kind of go real quick through something. People are like, oh, you roast the bean? Beans start out like this. They start out raw and we call these a green bean. This is raw coffee bean. They almost look like, well, like uh, Gillum said, they almost look jade. So we start there, and on the outside of that is what's called a chaff. It's a real thin, like, onion skin, and as the coffee roasts, it expands, and it just kind of, like, pops off, and you'll start to see it. You'll start to see the chaff come about here in a little bit. So when we drop the coffee from the hopper into the drum, it actually lowers the temperature of the drum, and it usually drops about to 145 degrees, and then as soon as it drops there, it slowly starts climbing, and that's when we turn the gas back on. Our temperature is getting up there. We're almost about 275. You can see the chaff is, is being released off the coffee bean. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it looks like uh, parchment paper. See there, right there is one. 
right there some. If you let that continue in your roast, you have a real like muddy coffee because the oils are gonna get start to get expressed and it's gonna stick to the oil and it's not gonna be clean. So we need to get rid of the chaff. And how we do that is real simple. We're gonna put our air through the roasting drum, get rid of the chaff, and you'll start seeing chaff outside. Yeah. There is a chaff collector in this roaster, but some of it gets past that collector and goes into the exhaust. We're gonna check out the chaff outside to see what it looks like coming out of the roaster. You guys smell that? Ooh, it smells so good. All right, you can definitely see smoke out here. I don't see any chaff right now. Sometimes it looks like it's snowing out here, snowing chaff. You can actually see a little bit. What's our most chaffiest coffee? I don't know. Guatemala. I would say Guatemala, Guatemala. yeah. I was gonna say that. It's Guatemala. We had a windstorm, so if you see like peeled off roofs, it's windstorm. We call this about wheat, wheat temperature. Like the actual color of wheat. Wheat? Yeah, wheat. Wheat. Like, Not like wheat. Made bread. No, that's green. So when you roast, so you get consistency. We take notes on temperature, air, gas, color, smell. Funny story, when Clayton, who's filming right now, we were in Nashville, 12 South area. It was kind of turning around. It's not like it is today. We were roasting Italian. And Italian goes pretty high. We heard this big knock on the, knock on the, scared the heck out of us because what time was it? What time? 10 o'clock, it was dark out. We're like, what the heck? So we go out and there's like, five, seven firemen in their garb. Like, are y'all okay? Is this place on fire? And we're like, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. We showed them what we were doing. I guess we got called on because there's so much smoke with Italian. We ended up giving them some coffee just for the firehouse because we felt so bad. But anyway, now we don't have that problem because we're out in the country. All right, so we're trying to get our coffee up to temp. We've gotten rid of the chaff. We're at, what is this, light, honey? I'm gonna bring up our air from here to here. That's gonna give us an increase that we need. We don't want to like really bake the coffee. We're roasting the coffee and there's a kind of a time limit. If you extend the time too much, much, it tears down the coffee. It, it gives it more of a bland taste. We want to bring it through its paces really quickly. We don't want to go too fast. We don't want to go too slow, but that will help us get to where we need to be. We're only roasting 26 pounds right now, but that's as much as this roaster can handle. All right, so at about 400 degrees, where we're at right now, the beans go through a process where they start to crack. We call it first crack. That's what's happening right now. You listen real closely. It's faint. And then about 440, we have second crack. And we're gonna take this roast up through second crack, well into second crack. But you can hear that pop, like popcorn. Yeah, that's first crack. Also a pretty cool thing that you may not realize is that within coffee, we have rocks. And we don't find out we have rocks until the end of the roast. Some countries are worse than others, but a lot of countries have rocks in their coffee, and if we don't get them out, they go into the grinder, and that's not good at all. This is probably two years' worth. And we're dropping the coffee. Check that out. All right, so we've dropped the coffee, and now it's in the cooling bin. Right now, we're trying to get this cooled down as quick as possible to stop the roasting process. Some roasters that are bigger have a water quenching system. We don't do that. We just don't like to put water with our coffee unless we're brewing it. So right now it's roasting, all the air is being drawn into there and out the exhaust so that we can stop the roasting process. All right guys, so we got done with one roast of three roasts that we have to do for a farmhouse or the espresso roast. So that's about it. It's pretty cut and dry. Maybe you'll enjoy this in our shop. Come and visit us in Jolton or we'll deliver it to you at your house. Hey, tell them about what we're thinking about with the, uh, you know, a monthly oh, yeah. deal. Oh yeah. So let us know in the comment section, something that we're running through, sending this out monthly on a regular basis to you. Let us know if that's something that you would like or you enjoy, be part of the Bex Nation. Let us know. We got a lot more work to do. You got a lot of work to do, so we will see you soon. Say bye. Later. Clayton, say bye. All right. Bye. All right, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.